Welcome to a new Precious Plastic video. So in this video, we're gonna make the Shredder Pro. Uh, you might have seen our uh, small shredder, and this one kind of does the same thing. It shreds plastic, but it works a bit different. This previous shredder had a single X, and this one has a double X. So the other one is slightly easier to build. Let me show you. Um, but it's also less efficient, less productive. And this shredder is really designed to uh, run more capacity, but it's also more complex to build. So make sure you decide what you want to do. So plastic shredders already exist around the world. So I would advise to first look locally to see if you can buy one, so you don't have to completely make it. If you do decide to make it, uh, watch this video, but you could also buy one on the bazaar or buy parts on the bazaar. So in this video, we're gonna build the machine. And overall, it requires a bit more advanced skills. Uh, if you want to know more about the specifications, the kilogram per hour output, the laser cut files, you can find it all in the link in the description in the download kit. Um, and for now, we're going to have Jan that's going to show you how to build it. Hi, so today we're going to build the Shredder Pro. And we're going to make it in seven steps. The frame, the axis, the hopper, the sieve, the electric box, the motor and all components around, and finally, getting all together. So I'll show you how to make it step by step. So we're gonna start by the frame. And this is quite an easy one. You only need square tubes, rectangular tubes, flat bar, a corner, and some bolts. Before you weld, you can drill a few of the holes you'll need to make for the motors and the cable management holes. Wait to drill the more critical holes until after you weld to ensure proper alignment. Now that the top of the frame is welded, start to mark all the holes positions by taking measurements relatively to each other. Before drilling, you can check with the laser cut bottom plate to make sure everything is in the right place. Then drill them all on the drill press. Once the holes are drilled, tack well the legs and assemble the motor plate. Before painting, we recommend cleaning the steel as some rust or grease will affect your painting quality. Then paint fully to the color of your choice. Now that the frame is complete, we are going to make the two shafts. The nut will tighten the blade together and avoid having loads on the bearing. This creates a much more complex axis to turn on the lace, but will add a lot of strength and efficiency to your shredder. For this, you need the hexagonal bar, the nut, and of course, the blade you laser cut. You should not remove the axis immediately from the lace, but first check the thread with the nut. Because if you need to rework it, then the tool is still in position to do that. 
Once one side of your axis is done, just switch it and do the same steps again. Once you machine one axis, just repeat the same steps for a second one. Once your hexagonal bars are ready, we can begin to work on the blades. To ensure a fit assembly, sand all the blades and spacers before. We will start with the long axis, and the first step is to use a screw on the short part. And you need to let more or less one millimeter clearance. Then this axis start to be with two four millimeter spacers. Then one two millimeter spacers, and we can start assembling the blades. Then on the long axis, we use the large number of teeth, and they should face counterclockwise. The order of the blades is indicated by one mark that you can find on each blade that should correspond to one face. And for each blade, you rotate one face counterclockwise. So one blade, one four millimeter spacers, and one two millimeter spacer. And for the second blade, the marks is switch by one face. Two spacers, and again a blade, switch one face counterclockwise, etc. So to assemble this axis, you also start by the bottom nut, also leaving around one millimeter clearance. This axis only requires one four millimeter spacer to start, and you can start putting the blades. On this one, the teeth of the blade should face clockwise, and you should start by the one that have 12 marks. Then you also need two spacers, one four millimeters and one two millimeters. and you can use the 11 marks blades. Then two spacer. Then the 10 mark blades. Then nine, eight, seven, etc. To check if your axes are done properly, you should place them as they will be in the shredder, so the long axis on your right and the short axis on your left. And the teeth should face each other. Also, as you can see, you created two spirals that turn in the same directions, which is counterclockwise. Now that your shafts are done, we're going to make the hopper. You can cut it yourself out of some steel sheets, but we also provide the file so you can laser cut it with your other parts. Tack well these plates together. To avoid deformations, don't fully weld these plates. Now let's make the sieve, which is hidden somewhere in that box. Different machines require different shredded plastic size, so you might want to swap your sieve to have different output. So don't hesitate to order multiple laser cut kit and mesh sizes, so you can have multiple ones available in your workspace. To make the sieve, you need the laser cut parts, a mesh, and some bolts. If you don't have the proper tools to roll a plate, then you can improvise that way by clamping uh, your mesh on the stable table by a piece of pipe, which is approximately the same diameter as your sieve, and then apply your weight on the sieve itself. So now we bended half of the mesh, so we have to cut to the right dimensions and bend it again for the second half. And now we do the second part. So 
So now our parts are ready, we can go welding. Assemble and tack weld the parts together first. The sieve will sometimes bear a lot of strain, so you will need to make a full and continuous weld. The sieve is tightly inserted beneath the shredder, so grind your weld to make it fit. So now we're gonna do the electronics. We can make it simple or complex, but we recommend at least an overload protection. And ideally, it auto-reverse when it jams. We like to use Arduino for this, and the schematics are in our download kit. You can also check our how-tos for other options. So to build this electric box, you need metal sheets, your electrical and Arduino components, a lot of cables, and some bolts. To save time, we choose to laser cut the box, but you can easily cut this part yourself. Actually, we will not film how to wire the box as it wouldn't be clear in a video. Please refer to the how-to and the schematics including in the download kit. Now it's time to focus on the motors and component around. That means the coupling and the gears. This chapter will be a talking one as all these parts have to be bought. Starting with the motor. We will include in our download kit detailed information on how to choose your motors. But as a summary, the important parameters are the torque, the rotating speed and the ratio. We will provide different options, but remember these basics. To shred, you need a 1000 Newton meter minimum torque for a speed somewhere in between 15 and 25 revolutions per minute. The ratio will indicate for how long you can turn the motor to its nominal amperage before you have to take a break. Of course, a better ratio means an increased price. There is different coupling options available and you have to choose them for the maximum allowed torque and we will recommend to slightly oversize them for better durability. We went for HRC type couplings for his alignment tolerance. But we will also provide different options in our download kit, depending on what's available for you. So the choice of the gears is more limited as it has to handle the torque and fit in the box. We will provide all the information and it might be updated according to community testing. Machining the inside keyway is a difficult operation, so if you don't find the gears which already have the right size, you might need to look for a local machinist to do it for you. Okay, so now we're going to make the shredder box, and this is where everything comes together. This is the final assembly, so make sure all of your parts are ready. Let's start to assemble. To do this, we need all your previous components. The frame, the motor, the gears, keyways, bearings, the two axes, and a bunch of bolts and nuts. The box laser cut plates, the sieve, the hopper, the electric box. A starting but optional step is to weld four of the thread bars to have a faster maintenance later. Then you need to prepare your plate by oiling them as we will not paint them due to tight adjustment. Now place the bottom plate. Prepare the side walls and insert that on top of it. Place the two extra middle plates and clamp them together to be able to make the thread. Then remove them. You might need help for this task. Lift the two axes together and slide them in the box. Then reinstall the middle plates. Center the axes by placing few static blades. Measure the distance between the nut and the side wall. You have a collection of adjustment spacer. I would advise to laser cut a bit more than needed. Place the needed number to make it touch the bearing. This will avoid your axis to move. Then install the bearing and tighten them to the same torque. If everything is rotating well, then place the fixed plates. Now, install the gears, close the box and install the last bearings. Mm -hmm. 
prepare the gear protection plate and install it. Pre-install the coupling on the shredder and on the motor. Pre-install the motor and then measure the coupling distance, height and angle. Keep the coupling in their good position and tighten them to the required torque. Adjust the box or the motor with some spacer to keep offset and angle misalignment inside the coupling tolerances. Then place the rubber and install definitely the motor. Now install your prepared electric box and wire the safety button and the motor. Then install the hopper and the sieve. Grease the bearings and the gears and it's done. So now it's time to turn it on. So first connect your motor to a three-phase plug. Check if your switchy button is unplugged. Turn the main switch on and turn forward. So you can read your intensity on the LCD screen or you can connect your computer to get a better reading. What you should be careful is always keeping this intensity as much as possible under your motor nominal amperage. We advise you to shred first without the sieve and then add the sieve to get finer granulates. You get more detail on different shredding techniques in our download kit and how to's. So for proper cleaning, remove the hopper. and the top plate. And the fixed blade. Now you have a proper access to remove all that plastic. As basic maintenance, don't forget to grease your bearings, your gears, and all your plate from time to time. All right, that's it, a Shredder Pro. Thanks for watching this video. And visit preciousplastic.com for more information and to get the files, the blueprints, the CAD models, the maintenance list, the bill of material, etc., in our download kit. And make sure to check out the how-tos for improvement and hacks on these machines. Good luck building. Oh, before you leave, I just want to let you know that Fresh Plastic fully runs on uh, people like you supporting it, because we share everything what we do open source online for free, so that everyone in the world can start recycling plastic and work together on this plastic problem. So, uh, if you want to help out or support in any way, visit support.freshplastic.com. Send us chocolate.